Just to prove that nothing can ever be taken for granted, the green flag wave for the Atlantics in Toronto, Ontario, just seven days ago. At that moment, most everyone assumed that Charles Rolsman, who started the race from the pole with a nine-point championship lead, would, as he had recently in Cleveland, dominate. The rest of the field, however, did not make such a presumption. First, the blue and white number 11 was passed by Mexico's David Martinez, and then Canada's Antoine Bissette had an insult to injury. A few laps later, the seemingly indomitable Dutchman was in the pits with all sorts of problems, heading for a 12th place finish. So much for assumptions, huh? For Long Beach winner Catherine Legg, her day featured a contest with Estonian Tonis Kasmans, who challenged her down the long straight, leading to turn three, only to have the young Briton block his attempts. Those moves earned the red and white number 12 a penalty trip down pit lane for blocking. In the end, she finished sixth and Kasmans eighth because of his own problem-driven pit stop. And the winner, well, remember Messrs. Martinez and Bissette? Well, the orange number three with Antoine Bissette on board, first pulled off a dramatic closing lap pass of number seven, then held on, posting his first ever Toyota Atlantic Championship victory. And bringing to four the number of drivers who have stood upon the top step of the podium in this, the 32nd season of the world's most prestigious open wheel development series. Perhaps even more surprising than the outcome of the Toronto gathering is the fact that in spite of the bizarre goings on of that contest, the race for the 2005 Toyota Atlantic Championship remains pretty much as it was going into that event. After the dust settled, Kazimitz was only able to close by two points. In the just as hotly contested battle for the Yokohama C2 Cup, Justin Sofio was able to reclaim the lead over Dan Cobb by virtue of Sofio's fourth division win. As usual, the Atlantic experience is providing all the challenge for which one could possibly hope. Including a brand new track here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, a 1.97 mile, 14 turn temporary circuit about which nothing is known because no one's ever competed here. You couldn't ask for a tougher lesson in how to compete in Major League Open Wheel Racing. Welcome everybody to Edmonton, Alberta, what the folks up here like to call the City of Champions. And this is round eight of the 12 event, 2005 Toyota Atlantic Championship. I'm Rick Brule, along with expert commentator Jan Vikas and pit reporter Chris McClure, and I'll be bringing you all the coverage of the Atlantics as it returns to Edmonton after a 24-year layoff. And let's take a look at how they've qualified for this race. Two guys on the front row, Charles Wolfsman, Tony's Kasmans have accounted for five of the seven races won so far this season. And what a difference it makes for Charles. Racing fortunes can change in an instant. Two wins at Cleveland, and then a mechanical took him out of the race at Toronto. A big downer, I know, Charles Wolfsman. How do you recover from that? Um, I think we just co keep continuing what we've been doing all year long. Just work hard and uh, go for the victory and, you know, everything will be fine again. We, we'll get lucky soon again. Row 2 has a couple more winners, Catherine Legg and Antoine Bisset. Actually, this is Catherine's best starting position of the season and she seems to have her Long Beach confidence back. Catherine Legg, of course, started the season better than anyone could have hoped or could have expected. And think about standing atop the podium in Long Beach, winning that first race. But then mid-season, it seemed like maybe something had changed. But now Catherine looks like the fun is back again. Absolutely. I mean, it's really been a men mental approach thing. Since Mexico, we've kind of got a bit frustrated and down on ourselves. And we really just picked that up. And I've spoken to a few people, and they've helped me with a few strategies just to, you know, realize that I, it's just fantastic to be here and I'm just having fun again and it seems to be working. And part of the fun was a little what she called a, a layoff, a mental layoff yesterday. She wasn't paying attention, spun slightly, but she didn't touch anything. In fact, she hasn't hit anything all weekend. She says she feels great and she was second fastest in this morning's warm-up. Let's look at row number three. It's all Brooks Racing, Andreas Wirth out of Germany and Allen's the third out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Row number four, David Martinez and Eric Jensen. Row number five is all C2, the C2 point. pole sitter, Daryl Liskey, along with Justin Sofio. Row six, Dan Cobb and Bob Siska. Row seven, Chris Soliotis and Roger Glover. Along pit lane, Chris McClure will be down there today. Let's check in with him. The object of the Sunday exercise on warm-up is to find out if the car is ready to go. And today, number seven, David Martinez, found big trouble in the engine compartment. That put crew chief John Martinez and his troops to work in the paddock as they effected an engine change between the warm-up and race time. Now, he's coming off a second at Toronto, ran a third at Monterey earlier this year. But David Martinez is out there with a new engine in the compartment. And they're not entirely sure everything is going to be all right. We're going to find out in a few moments. Let's go to Jan. 
Well, when you talk about the course that he's going to be running, you can see clearly it is a runway. It's an airport course, a little under two miles, 14 turns. But look there at turn number one. Anytime we go to an airport circuit, obviously turn one is a place, a lot of action. Let's take a look at our in-car cameras for today. It's all front row. We'll be on board with Tony's Kazmitz, who's starting on the outside. And beside him, our other in-car camera, Charles Wolfman, the guy who's starting on the pole. And here they go to get the green flag. You see how wide this runway is? They oh, got first Catherine Lake got in the back of Solzman. That was just like Cleveland going in, only this time she didn't really have any problems. She managed to maintain that position behind. Wow, she came in there a little bit too hot, offline, locked up the front brakes into the back, but that is the difference, is that this was a front-to-rear contact, and it appears as though everybody got through turn one. Yeah, Catherine Lake not only was survived the damage, she or what the, the connection, the, the collision, if you want to call it that, she's also moved up into second place. There you see, she moved right in behind Charles, locked up the brakes. Oh, but she also got together with Kazimitz, and he got a big wiggle, got wide. That was very fortunate. There wasn't more damage. There's definitely some rubbing in turn number one, like we predicted. Antoine Bissette, you saw it meanwhile, was going to the outside, and he managed to stay clear of the whole thing, fortunately for him, and maintain that fourth position. But Catherine Lake, the big question is, did she do any damage to her car? I wouldn't think so. Certainly not on the nose cone, but we don't know about the side-to-side -side contact. Chris, do you have more? Well, I just talked to John Brooks quickly. I said that she hurt the car. He said, we don't know yet, but she's not talking. And as they go by, it looks like everything's just fine. The wind seems to be is it slightly askew. It's kind of hard to tell from that angle. But she hasn't lost anything to Charles Wolfman. And she's been pretty quick this weekend. Once again, we talked about how she has her confidence back. During the morning warm-up, she was fast during most of it. And Charles Wolfman only picked her at the very end of the session. Zolzman is going to be a tough train to derail, however. She definitely has regained her form, as we spoke about. But uh, Zolzman has got that confidence roll going. It's going to take a lot to unseat him or get him off the track, so to speak. Riding on board with Tony's Kazmitz. We got in that slight collision and doesn't seem to be too worse for the wear, although he has moved back a spot as well. Now, he was the fastest qualifier on day one, so the provisional pole sitter. And then they changed the car to a wet setup for the next day, and when it went dry again, he said, somehow we mistakenly didn't put the car back as we wanted. He was last night, just couldn't figure out what was wrong with the car. They found today something had been done incorrectly. Felt much more comfortable about it. That is David Martinez in the Rochefront's car, back out on the track. We watched him just a moment ago as they were thrashing to put this together, and right now, he is back in 11th, moving his way up. But the important thing is for these guys is they've managed to get the car back on the track, and that was a major achievement this morning. Back on track with Charles Wolzman as he is being pursued by Catherine Legg. Catherine Legg's not giving anything up. She, in fact, she seems to have closed within just a little bit more on Charles Wolzman. The question is, can she take advantage of it? Just a little bit of it closer to pick up. Now, the straightaways are not as long here as they are in Cleveland, so you don't have quite the drafting opportunities. But there's a combination of corners coming up here that will then set you up to a straightaway and then a left and right, which could give you an opportunity to pass in turn one. Let's see how close she gets when she comes into this position. Again, you're riding on board with Wolfman, the leader. Catherine Legg right behind, the Long Beach winner trying to win again. And here's where you want to be quick. If she's quick off that chicane, she might be close enough to dive in turn one. She takes a look. She wants to do it, but she can't quite make the pass happen. So Catherine Legg sitting in second place, trying to figure out how to get by Charles Wolfman. We're going to take a brief break from up here in Edmonton, and we will return. Welcome back to Edmonton, Canada. We're up here at a place they're calling Finning International Speedway. Finning being a local uh, heavy equipment distributor. This is a temporary circuit. What they've done is they've taken the airport runways and added some asphalt in between them. And actually, it's a fairly decent circuit. The drivers seem to like it. They say it's fast and not as bumpy as they expected it to be. But the places that it is bumpy are where Tony's Kazimitz is at the moment. This is the section where you can definitely see the bumps. And right in this section, very bumpy through there, but then the rest of it, 
not too bad as you go from airport taxiway to runway, some purpose-built or purpose-paved road, so it's faster than people anticipated, and just about every driver you talk to loves it. Back up front where Charles Wolzman still continues to lead as he has from the outset, and Catherine Legg, despite that first turn minor bump, shall we say, has managed to keep right within a very short distance. But this coming up, this chicane, it's like a really quick, almost flat out in top gear through here, 125 miles an hour. If she can get quickly off of that, she's close enough to try again. She takes a look to the inside, just like she did last time. Oh! Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and we should mention Andreas Wirth is right behind. Andreas Wirth is in third, and he's had some trouble with tires all weekend. They've been trying to figure out. He flat spotted tires on Friday, flat spotted tires on Saturday, and as a result, they are only allowed two sets of tires for the whole weekend. The question was which set to run on because they couldn't figure out which one was going to be the least bumpy. Well, they give you eight tires, and he damaged five, so he didn't have a set of four. They gave him one hardship tire, so he does, in fact, have a set of four that started the race square, or round, sorry. <laughs> the other ones were square. There's Andreas Wirth out of Germany, who uh, managed to come up with a decent set of tires before it was all said and done. Hasn't really been happy with the car this weekend. He's had some issues. There was a problem with a, sort of a misfire on Friday. It just hasn't been the, an ideal weekend. Every time I went over to talk to me, that looked like, why me? Why is this happening to me? Now, when you talk about the tires, it, it's not an issue on the Yokohamas as wearing or anything. It's just a case of he had some spins. He had to lock up the brakes. He had some things he had to avoid. And on an airport circuit that tends to be more abrasive, you lock up the Yokohamas, they're going to light on fire and put a flat spot. All racing tires do that. And that's something that the drivers learn coming up through the series is how to maintain it. Big, huge crowd out here at Edmonton this weekend. And they, they're calling it a sellout. We had, what, 55,000 on Friday, 60. And it was raining yesterday, and the place was packed in the morning. It was 66,000 people, people showed up on a day that uh, you wouldn't even want to venture outside and let's go to a racetrack. So that was amazing, the kind of support that they've had from the fans. Let's talk about Andreas Worth and the season he's had leading from the pole of Portland. Check out, that was a little bump pass from Tony's Kazmitz. Kept Andreas Worth off the top step of the podium. In Cleveland, a great back and forth battle with Antoine Bissette. And in Toronto, another good show, staying ahead of Catherine Legg and Tony's Kazmitz to finish third. And third is the position he's in right now. And I think if you were to talk to him yesterday or this morning, he would have said, oh, kind of I'd be surprised to be in third. Not only is he in third, he's managing to keep those leaders relatively close, although he's not gaining on him and the gap is appearing to grow. But the gap between first and second, on the other hand, between Charles and Catherine is staying nice and constant. But Charles is starting to put down some quick laps. He just did the fastest lap of the race at a 108.3. Catherine Legg was oh, a little more than a tenth behind that. So he's he's definitely starting to pick it up. Well, we talked about Catherine's confidence improving. Finance is set for the rest of the season. Makes you feel a little better. Let's see if she can take advantage of it today. We'll be back. Exclusively on speed. Looking at the back of Tony's Kazmitz, who is in fourth place right now, and that is Antoine Bassett, who won at Toronto. And Antoine Bassett says the car just hasn't been quite what he wants this weekend. They had a few issues yesterday uh, with some tire pressure issues. He says the tires just haven't quite been what he's been looking for this week. And as a result, he's not really comfortable with the way the car's running. Now, it's very interesting how touchy these cars are. Sometimes, although the tires are all made in identical fashion, there's a set you like or a set you don't like. He tried this morning to run the qualifying tires he'd used on day one didn't like those either so he's back to the ones he used in qualifying day two he said it just doesn't give me quite the feel that i want with the car a unique design car unique design apparently a company out of montreal that does uh, aftermarket work on older porsches 944s that kind of thing modify them make them look a little bit better you have to be happy with the performance that antoine has given him this year where he's kind of been working his way and got the confidence out of the win last week and he was hoping to carry on this weekend but just hasn't been able to make it happen and certainly the team has the setup because he is teammates with Catherine Legg, and we have seen that she definitely has been able to put down some laps, but they don't like the car set up the same. He likes a lot more stick to the front. She likes it to be maybe not quite so, so stuck in the front, and so therefore they can't share everything identically. Yeah, well, they're saying that uh, he likes to dive into the corners more. She likes to go a little slower into the corners. Ironically, the result is they're both pretty quick at the, 
it, it, the very end, even though they have different styles. You see him there going through the traffic, some back markers right there who got out of the way of both Charles and Catherine, but then moved back into line ahead of Andreas Wirth. Yeah, at some stage you have to get back into line, and that's why you really want to try to stay close first and second place to try and make sure you don't get a lap or cut in between. Chris? Jim Griffith is on the horn. Catherine out there. Good mo bold move at the beginning. And I wonder if you've noticed a, a new atmosphere around her. Is, is she more relaxed this week than she's been for several? Yeah, we're just trying to get her to have some fun. You know, just tell her, go out there, have some fun. And this is what she likes doing. So how could it be bad? Typically, when she's challenging and in a good fight like she is at the moment, does she talk much? Do you talk much to her? Or do you just let her go? I'm really a cheerleader for her. She doesn't talk much back, but I'm telling her she's doing a good job. I'm telling her to get on the gas, get after him, and she does it. Lots of encouragement from Pitt Wall, and she's doing a good job. Yeah, definitely what we can see right now is she sits in second. And, you know, the thing about a driver is you've got to take risks every now and then. If you don't take risks, you know, you, you run the risk of not moving up. And, you know, you have guys that sit, team owners that look at you and say, well, you know, you had a chance there if you just dive a little bit. And but at the same time, you don't want anything to go wrong. And I think it's a case, I mean, that's what the Toyota Atlantic Series is all about. You're not supposed to be polished at this stage. You're supposed to be learning things. And the only way you learn things, and I think that's her attitude early on in the season was, you know, I'm still learning, but you could really sense the weight and the pressure, maybe in round two, three, four, five, in that area. Now it definitely is different, and like we heard from her team, starting to lighten up a bit. Yeah, it was almost kind of a mixed blessing when she won that race in Long Beach because it set her up, like, what do you do next? So the only thing left to do is to win. Let's talk about her season so far, a history-making victory in Long Beach, but disappointment in Portland, an abrupt end to her first race in Cleveland, and then Toronto with a great race growing, a blocking move to thwart Tony's Kazma's pass, earned her a drive-through penalty. She ultimately finished sixth, lost some championship points as a result. And they've clarified the rule for this weekend in particular. They've gone to the champ car rule, which says you cannot make a blocking move at all. In the past, they used to allow one move, not a blocking move, but one move. Now you're not even allowed one move as a result. Uh, what they've kind of clarified it, made it very clear, so everybody's supposed to know what, what can happen during the race. Well, the interesting thing about that is I did speak with the chief steward, KC Van Nyman. He said, well, even on the old rule, we had warned her, and the way that she moved abruptly in response, either whether it was a new rule or the old rule, we would have pulled her in. Yeah, you're not allowed, you were never allowed to alter your line for the turn to prohibit somebody from passing you. Charles Wolfman continues to lead here at Edmonton, but Catherine Lake not too far behind. We're going to take a brief break, but we will return in just a moment to Edmonton. We saw Catherine Leg while we were in a commercial break try to make that move underneath Charles Wolfsman and just couldn't make it stick, but it's the closest she's come yet. And the key is to getting off that final chicane and get right in this portion of the racetrack and be just a little bit closer. But the amazing thing to me, she can stay right behind Charles Zolzman in a 125 mile an hour corner. Normally when you get right behind, you lose the air off the front wings, the car won't turn. So they have obviously got the front of her car pinned to the point where she can still stay close. And I think she's gonna have a shot to get by. Yeah, she definitely wants to make it happen. And you know, it's a thing where you're so close, you can touch it, you can see it. And the question is, when do you wait for a mistake or do you just go ahead and make and force the issue? She's kind of been forcing the issue. I, mean, <laughs> I think she's forced the issue a couple times to where it looked like she's going to get the nose chopped off because one thing we know about Charles Zolzman is that he's going to turn in when it's time to turn in. He, he is an aggressive guy himself, very consistent, and I, I don't expect he's going to be opening the door anywhere to let her through. As they come along, Catherine Lake so close. Once again, she was very quick in the morning warm-up made it very clear she was going to be challenging during the course of the day. And although Wolfsman ultimately was fastest in morning warm-up, Catherine said she would have had an even faster lap, at least for her lap, except she made a mistake on it. So she was confident coming into this race that the car was even better than it appeared in the morning warm-up. Got some great combination corners. You can see left and right, left and right. The car really needs to be good in the change of direction. And this is the bumpy section. She's just setting up for a, what we call a dive underneath that was working through some traffic. She's definitely close enough now. All right, let's see what she can do here. She comes through this section. She's very close. 
She's not going to try it in this upcoming chicane, or she shouldn't. She needs to just try and stay close enough. So at the exit of this chicane, again, like we've talked about, sorry, they still have a combination corners to come, and then she'll try and set up for that pass into turn one. Catherine's been a great story all season long. She had to work really hard to get into this seat. It's a great story about how she... Uh, Met up with Kevin Kalkovin in an airport, you know, with her little bag in hand to make her make her case, plead her case to get a little sponsorship money. He sponsored her for the first six races to see how she'd do. She won the first race and said some pretty good flashes since then, so he was ultimately able to step up to the plate. And it's really been a learning lesson from a lot of different perspectives for Catherine, both in learning the tracks, learning the cars, and as well learning about how to uh, how to handle the pressure of what the you know the media wants to see and having a manager all those things become an issue let's check in with chris carlos very quickly charles is leading he's under heavy pressure does he talk much in this sort of a situation no he normally he doesn't say much unless there's something wrong no he, he doesn't talk at all and we try not to talk to him too much unless we inform him about you know faster slaps and stuff like that well, what do you read into the situation? Do you feel he's comfortable and feels like he's in control? Would he be in that frame of mind at this point? I think he's comfortable. I'm not. I think this is the longest <laughs> race I've ever been. <laughs> okay, well, we'll let the comfort man out there take care of business. You sit here and, and worry, okay? Uh, thank you. Okay, they're going to worry on pit wall and let him do his job. Charles Wolzman, now once again, this is where Catherine tries to make the challenge if she can make it happen if she's close enough. Not this time. What has happened is that Charles Zolzman is very cagey. He knows where she needs to be close, and that's where he's pushing the hardest, keeping that gap. All right, while well, Charles Zolzman continues to head off the Catherine Lake Challenge, we will take a break and return with more from Edmonton right after this. In the midst of difficult conditions weather-wise for qualifying here in Edmonton, the Yokohama C2 Championship chase has reached a bit of a crossroads. The man in this car, number nine, Dan Cobb, is second in the championship, and he must simply win here in Edmonton if he hopes to hold off the charge of that fellow, Justin Sofio, for the title. Now, if Sofio wins here in Edmonton, all he needs to do is put in an appearance, basically, at San Jose for the next race, and he will salt away the title. Where's the pressure? It's in the cockpit of the number nine, not in the cockpit of this man. Now, one thing you have to remember about the Yokohama C2 Championship, the drivers only count the points from their top seven finishes. As a result, that means it's not enough for Dan Cobb just to finish. He needs to win. And it's going to be tough to beat Sofio's four victories. Sofio started in second in the C2 division today. He was behind Bob Liskey, but he has now taken the position. And he is leading in the C2 race as well, the championship. So those points are going to be very important. And you see some of the leaders going by. That was Andreas Worth right there. And that was uh, Worth and Kazimitz. It actually looks like Antoine Bissett. Back on board with Charles Wolzman. There is Catherine Lake still behind. Charles Wolzman, we should mention, has a couple new sponsors this weekend. Land Trans Systems and Boychuk Transport. Really interesting because it is two transportation companies. And as a result... Normally, you'd never have two competing companies on a car. It's like, you know, Carlos Bobeda was saying, you know, they kind of both came to us. It worked out well, so they went ahead and went with it. And this is the battle for third and fourth. And you can see that Tony's Kazmitz is now in fifth place behind Antoine Bissette. There's Worth with a question mark on the side of the car. Been working hard to find sponsorship all season long. He's got the Virgis, Virgis Windows and Doors sponsorship on the for an associate sponsorship, but he's been looking for a prime sponsor, just hasn't been able to make it happen. You can see that Bissette got in a little bit of trouble there, got a little bit wide, lost some of the grip, and that's giving Tonis Kazimitz, who we ride with now, an opportunity to look for a place to duck inside. Again, a very frustrating weekend for Kazimitz. Thought he had the Tiger by the tail in the first round of qualifying, but there's something happening up front. And that's Catherine Lang, who looks like she's been able to get by Charles Roseman for the lead of the race. Now, we have some back markers here, and I'm curious if the back markers had any effect on that. We were watching them come up on some of those back markers, wondering if they were going to play a spoiler in this. Now the question will be, is Catherine faster at other points on the track, and can she start to stretch out a lead? 
Catherine, and that is really what brought her her victory in Long Beach. She is just tremendous in practice and pouncing on opportunities. So we'll see that Zolzman, well, he was behind a slower car, Roger Glover, or swinging wide to make a move, and as soon as he swung wide, she just took advantage. Took advantage of it, and once again, that's a slower car, back marker. Glover, who is back in 12th place right now, trying to stay out of the way, but at the same time, he's still on the track, and as a result, Zolzman swung a little too wide. Catherine was able to take advantage and take the position. It certainly appeared as though Catherine has had the speed throughout the entire race to put the pressure, as you said, on Zolzman. But now, clear track, clear air over those front wings. Find out what kind of speed this car really has. And remember, when we talked about how well she's been doing, Charles Wolfman has been the fastest guy all weekend. He was the fastest in the qualifying session. Just took the pole at the very end of the session. This morning in the warm-up, he made his fastest lap right at the end of the session. He seems to know how to dig deep and find it when he needs it. And suffice to say, this is the time to figure out that he needs it. See the wide open space of this track. It's kind of nice from the driver's standpoint. You know, you can afford to get off track and not have a big problem. Let's take a look from the in-car of Charles Wolfman on that pass. Now, he is swinging wide to try and get himself in position here to make a move on a lap car. And I know that he was not expecting that as a place where someone's going to make a move. And that is why I said she did in Long Beach. She is done here. That is where you're having fun, like we've been talking about the whole theme here. That's not when you think that through. You just see a gap and you go. And that's an instinctive thing, and that's something you don't see very often for any driver. And it's also a heads-up play. Heads-up play by Catherine. She was able to see the gap, take advantage of it. Also, heads-up by Charles Wolfman. He knew just how far to go over. Couldn't force her off, and both of them stayed on the track. Edmonton Mall right there. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Edmonton. We are riding on board with the guy who is now in second place. Charles Wolzman, who started on the pole, led so much at the beginning of the race, just a few moments ago, lost the lead to Catherine Legg. And Catherine, it looks like she's starting to check out a little bit. I think she's she's off to the races, so to speak. But also you could hear there on the onboard that Zolzman had to lift out of the throttle there. His handling may not be what he wants and may, in fact, not have the car to respond. Talking about teammates, that orange car is Antoine Bissette. That is the teammate of Catherine Legg. And obviously, the Polestar team has got this race figured out. But they have very different setups in terms of driving styles, but they both under, the team understands the track, has been able to figure it out. Said the car was bottoming out a little bit more yesterday than they liked. They were able to raise that right height just a little bit. And now he's sitting in fourth, trying to battle with Andreas Wirth. Just not quite close enough to make anything happen. And that is Tonise Kazmitz back behind. Talking about Antoine Bissette after bad luck tangling with Charles Wolfman in Portland and a brush with the wall in Cleveland. Ouch! During last lap pass in round seven gave Antoine Bissette his first Atlantic win in Toronto. Great event for Antoine Bissette. Great for the Canadian crowd as well. Now for Andreas Worth that he is chasing at the moment. He is also, it's taken him some time with his Brooks Racing team to get the kind of handling and the kind of handle on the car. Nick Harvey is his engineer and said, coming out of the Formula BMW championship, these drivers tend to like the car really positive. They want to turn the steering wheel and have it dart into the corner like a go-kart. But with the Toyota Atlantic Series, you have to kind of learn how to have the car not be quite so positive, kind of take your time, roll it in. And as you get into faster and faster cars, they don't tend to be quite that responsive. You have more weight to move, you have to have them be a little more gradual. You want to carry the speed because yeah. that helps to keep you, the downforce helps keep you on the track. And Twamba set behind, not seeming to make up anything at this point. And generally in, the, in these higher speed corners, you see that people can't run too close together. I would say that Catherine Lang is about the only car we've seen today that could run right on the back end of somebody else. Let's talk about David Martinez. We've talked about the problems that they had getting the car out on track. Right now he's running back in eighth place. And while that's not going to be a great finish for them, when you consider where they were at this morning trying to change the engine, it's great that they're even out there. Chris? 
We're with Shane, the, the car owner. Shane, just very quickly, the attitude in the cockpit, as you can read it now, after an engine change, kind of settling into eighth and not much chance of moving forward, it doesn't appear. No, it doesn't. Uh, we made a few changes on the car for the warm-up. We never got a chance to run it, and we didn't have enough time to go back to our original setup. So we just had to change the engine and get him out there, get some points, finish this race. I know it's not very gratifying, but a job well done today. That's tough work. Thank you. It was, uh, David's done a great job all weekend, and uh, you know we had to get him back out there. The crew did a good job. Well, they came to race, and at least they're doing that, fellas. Yeah, you always ask the question, how long does it take to change an engine? And the answer is always, how much time have we got? <laughs> if you got two hours, you do it in two hours. And we've got an incident on the track right here. This is, looks like Bob Siska. And uh, is that Chris Soliotis or Dan Lizard? Can't quite see it, but that is definitely Bob Siska in the black car in the foreground, a couple of the C2 cars. While they get that sorted out, we're going to take a break and return to Edmonton right after this. Get the other guy's car. The loser needs to ride or find a ride home. Pinks on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, exclusively on speed. Huge crowd out here for the Atlantics this morning. Massive crowd. The folks out here in Edmonton have turned out in numbers. Obviously, they like their champ car racing. They like open wheel racing. And they've definitely turned out this morning. And like we said earlier, big crowd on Saturday, even in the rain. Now, we are under a yellow flag condition right now because of an incident that happened just a short time ago between Dan Liskey and Bob Siska. And for Liskey, he gets to the inside here and tries to make an aggressive move, didn't really have position on Bob Siska, and unfortunately, and he puts his hands up like, well, I'm sorry, I don't think you had the spot. You have to get your car really to the point to where the driver can see and give you room coming in. Chris? John Brooks, you're pacing like a caged cat. You guys in third, Andreas. And the next corner after the green flag comes down may decide this thing. Do you like your chances? Well, we've been struggling all weekend, but Andreas has been working really, really hard. We want to continue to do well like we have been the last five or six races because Andreas is becoming a factor in the championship. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed, try to keep our nose clean, and uh, get a good finish again this weekend. Okay. We're about to go green. We'll get it back there. All right, Jan, what's your advice for Catherine, if you could tell her something right now? Well, she can't block. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm Zoll's then I now know how fast, fast Catherine Lake is, and I know that turn number one may be my one and only opportunity to stay out front with only five to go. And you see that was David Martinez swinging out because he's actually a back marker. He was trying to get out of the way. Catherine Lake didn't give up anything. She got a nice little jump ahead of Charles Wolfman. She was able to easily hold on to the lead. Andreas Wirth, who was in third, not able to get a jump on Wolfman. Bissett still continues to be behind Worth, and as a result, not able to gain anything right there. Tremendous restart. That is, you know, that is why it is so helpful to be in the lead on a restart because you can dictate the pace. But a great battle here for third, third, fourth, and fifth. John Brooks out of Tucson and his team doing well this year. Wants to do a little better, and you see that is Tony's Kasmich who's trying to take a look to the inside of. And Swamp Bassett, and he takes the position. Maybe, but Bassett's coming back on the outside. That's the thing, you know, you move out and get out of line to make a late break into the, into the turn. But if you can't make it stick, if you carry momentum too much, the guy just repasses you. Swung wide, and also for swinging wide and losing that momentum was in too high of a gear. Couldn't get it back up to speed quick enough. Bassett, and in the meantime, that gives the opportunity for Andreas Worth to pull out a nice gap while these two battle. And the big frustration for Tony's Casmus is that he's sitting here thinking about the championship. He's just seven points behind in the championship status. He needed to either win the race or, more importantly, stick really close to Zwolzman. And he needs every single position he can get to keep himself into contention for the final rounds of this Toyota Championship Series. sizing up the set, seeing if there is a place. Now, of course, once you've already made a move, you've been working and working, trying to find a place that you can slot inside to try and take the spot. And once you've done that, you've kind of showed your hand. It's going to be hard to find another one. Well, plus he had the advantage of coming off the yellow flag where it was a little more grouped up as well. The question is, are you going to get that advantage again? Is something, hopefully some traffic, going to slow Antoine up just a little bit so Tonise can take advantage of another possible mistake? Bissett has made to a mistake if you even want to call it that, even allowing him to get
get in, but more importantly, he was able to take advantage of Tonisa's momentum, take care of him too far, and took the position right back. But Catherine Legg up front had a perfect restart. She got the lead and a great pass a while ago. We've got just a couple laps left. When we come back, we'll find out who's going to win the race here in Edmonton. Rick Rule along with Jan Bikas and Chris McClure, and we are getting to the white flag lap. Just one lap to go here at this temporary circuit out at the city center. There's Kevin Kalkovan, the guy who's been helping out Catherine Lake this year. Looking forward to see if her girl, his girl can get a victory. Chris? Well, I spoke to Kevin a while ago. He came out in the bright sunshine. He said, are you having fun? And he said, when Catherine's leading, you bet I'm having fun. He's really into this right now. No question. Well, you got to think about this as an investment. You know, he helped her out early on, and I, you know, he's got uh, some bigger cars. I think he wouldn't mind seeing her step into later on. Once she starts proving herself that she can do it, especially in a race like this, and you look at both her victories, neither one was handed to her. She worked hard to get the Long Beach victory, and if she can make this one stick, but look at Charles Bolzman. I was going to say, don't don't uh, count your chickens before they hatch because they're coming to the section of corners where they change positions in the first place. And we know that Zolzman is going to be highly motivated. Oh, he's getting a bit loose. I don't think he'd be close enough, but he's giving it the old college try. He's trying to get as close as he can. The problem is there's really no place. This is just that final chicane before the checkered flag. Catherine holds on. Kevin's watching it. Let's see her take the checkered flag. She gets it with Charles Wolfman right behind. And Kevin is one happy sponsor. Jim Griffith also happy as well. And once again, we have to point out, Catherine, two victories this year, earned both of them. And he passes to get her way into the lead, and she did it again today. Predict that this victory will be more important than the first one. I mean, it was historic, certainly in Long Beach, but from a confidence standpoint and where her career will go, I think she will look to this one as being even better. Chris, you down there with Jim Griffith, I understand, the team owner. Yeah, a very happy team owner. Big hug from Kevin Kalkoven, a tremendous pass, and then good courage at the end. Yeah, she just hung in there. She did what she had to do. She focused on the track. She knew how fast she had to drive. She did a really good job. A really good job indeed. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, and especially you remember that very first turn where she had a little contact with Tony's Kazmitz. And you were wondering for just a moment there if she was even going to be able to survive that first lap. But not only did she survive the first lap, she survived the race and won the whole thing. Chris? Kevin Calcoven has stopped jumping. He was a happy man just a moment ago, still happy but not jumping around. You said you were having fun with Catherine in front, and she stayed there the whole way. Yeah, she just drove a wonderful race. Before the race, uh, we were in the transporter, and I said that uh, the podium is yours today. Just have fun and uh, relax. And, boy, she did that. She just drove a great race. You know, that seems to be the, the preponderant theme this weekend for her. Let's have fun again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she got uh, a little bit, I guess, uh, uptight after having won. She thought that she had to win every race after that, and uh, she slipped a bit. But she's really come back, and she's a fantastic driver, and a great credit to the series. Congratulations to you as well. Thank you. Yeah, nothing like a victory to take off some of the pressure that you've been thinking you had to have to get that next victory. Great crowd out here just saw Catherine Lake in her second victory of the season. We are going to take a break, and we'll come back in a moment. In. She had that historic victory in Long Beach, but as Jan was saying, I think this one ultimately may be even more important to her. This one takes that monkey off the back. Says, not only can you win, you can win twice, and if you can win twice, you can win three times, and that's exactly what she's looking forward to. Let's go down to Chris, who's standing by with our winner. Did you have fun today? I had immense fun today, yeah. I mean, first of all, I'd like to thank Edmonton and Edmonton Mall for putting on such a great performance. I mean, you know, for their first attempt at a circuit, this is awesome. And then second of all, obviously, I'd like to say thanks to my team, Polestar and Kevin Calcoven, for giving me the opportunity. First lap. Big move down to the inside, picked up some space that kind of set up everything. I mean, the first corner was, a, I thought I'd done some damage to the front of my car because Charles braked and, and I went over a bump and I braked and I just touched the rear of his car, so sorry, Charles, about that. And then, um, yeah, Tony's got caught up in that a little bit, so I feel a bit bad for him, but um, we managed to pull away. I think, you know, we were just in a, in a field of our own today. Rebuild the decisive pass, the one that won it. I mean, it's just traffic, you know, um, you just have to learn how to work the traffic and I, I just think you make a split second decision and you're not thinking it's a subconscious decision and obviously it paid off today. So, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't and it was good. 
Well, that was terrifically executed. Now the restart, very quickly. What's in your mind at that moment? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got. I was really lucky because I had Ronnie Bremer on the on the earphone saying um, yeah. on the radio saying when to go, when it was green, and, and what to do, and um, we managed to pull it off. Well, congratulations. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. Thank you. Ronnie Bremer, a handy guy to have in the headphones, a guy who's done well in Atlantics in the past, and moved on to Champ Car, so a uh, guy definitely knows how to give a little bit of advice. The Catherine Leg wins here at a, in Edmonton. Charles Wolzman, although he's in second place, has to be happy with the points he's pulled off. That's going to allow him to keep the lead in the championship. Andreas Worth finishes third. Not bad considering where he could have been. And we got to point out David Martinez and that Rosefront team. Yeah, they finished eighth. It's not where they wanted to be, but there's no question considering the thrash they do to get him out on the track, it was a major achievement just to be there. Chris? Charles Wolzman, second place. So you're, you know, not Toronto. I mean, you got back a little uh, bit, but not where you wanted to be. No, Tell me about the pass that put you P2. Ah, uh, she made a great pass on me. I have to admit, uh, the the back marker made it uh, as if as if he was going to let me by, and then he turned in. So I had to hesitate and get off the off the throttle a little bit early. And she made full advantage of it. Uh, took full advantage, and she did a good job there. Did you get? fooled on the restart a little bit she got away from you there yeah I was having problem with my gearbox from the, from the from the start because uh, actually Catherine hit me at the start so uh, my gears weren't shifting as they which uh, was supposed to so I, I was stuck in fourth gear here on, on the straight at the restart and uh, that's why she got away but a uh, few laps to, uh, to little to still make a pass well second that's not to be sneezed at congratulations okay thanks yeah, let's talk about the importance of that second place in the fact that that allows Charles Wolzman to continue in the lead in the points for this Toyota Atlantic Championship race. You see now he's stretched out the lead over Tonise Kazmitz to 15 points. And down in the, the Yokohama C2 Cup, Justin Sofio won the division today. And as a result, he has stretched out his lead even more. Let's get down to Chris, who's talking with our C2 champion for today. Justin? A division victory once again. You're just a hair's breadth away from a championship. Yeah, you know, I didn't have the fastest car today, and uh, I really had to calm myself down and put it all together. And, you know, the wind just basically came to me again. You know, I just keep my head on and, and finish the race, and we're stacking them up. Well done. Thanks a lot. Yeah, great race for Justin Sofio. Comes away with another C2 victory. What do you think, Jan, of this Edmonton track and the, the crowd? The track has been fantastic, and obviously there's some great opportunities to pass. Great race track, great response. A lot of fun out here. All right, that's going to do it. I'm Rick DeBrule for Jan Vegas and Chris McClure. Thanking you for joining us for round number eight of the 32nd season of the world's most prestigious open wheel development series. You know, it's a Toyota Atlantic Championship. And we want to remind you to join us for the next Atlantic event on Saturday, August 6th at 1.30 Eastern Time when the Atlantics move to a spot even further west to the other new racetrack, San Jose, California, round nine on a temporary street circuit. Should be every bit as exciting as this one. It was a great race here in Edmonton. A historic victory for Catherine Legg, her second, Kevin Kalkovan, a happy guy. Thanks for being here. See you next race.